Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So today's video, as promised, we're gonna be building some stairs. Like I said, I looked at a few online calculators. Um, I'm not really trusting all of them 100%, but I've seen enough videos, I can kind of figure out how this is gonna go. Um, some of the calculators have the header in different spots, which I don't understand how that is. If it's a calculation of how the stair is going to be, they should all be 100% the same. But we're going to wait to put in the header until I actually get the stairs going down and I actually know uh, what the six foot eight height is, where you step on the last step that your head won't hit that header because that is code. Um, so we're going to go to the store, we're going to pick those up, we're going to get cutting. Fingers crossed we don't make any mistakes because I really don't want to have to go all the way back down uh, town to pick up a 18-foot uh, long piece of lumber because I messed up. But uh, like I said, I think I've seen enough that I can figure out how this is going to go. By the way, my birthday is coming up in a few days. If you haven't noticed, I'll be representing uh, some new apparel. No, we are not sponsored, but uh, my mom has been sending me some stuff in the mail. Uh, again, because it's my birthday and uh, she decided to pick a bunch of work gear from Ariat. And uh, so far it seems like pretty nice stuff. Should keep me warm working out here. I've got some other stuff, but uh, I hate working in kind of my nice clothes that are not really geared for working because you just end up messing them up. Anyways, thank you mom for the birthday presents. They're going to keep me warm this winter. And for everyone else, stick around. We're going to go ahead and get started. You guys can hear me uh, I know on some other videos where I was recording in the truck uh, wasn't really that great of audio because I needed to do a tire rotation and uh, these Navi Jeep Wrangler wheels that I have on here or tires uh, were creating a little bit of uh, noise because they were starting to cup so they needed a rotation so they're in the back now and I rotated the fifth wheel spare in so hopefully you can hear me a little bit better but we're on our way right now to Menards. Unfortunately, we have to go all the way to the downtown one because for whatever reason, when I purchase stuff online, I must not be clicking, and I really don't want to, to click on location. So if I buy something online, it thinks I'm in another location that I am, and I don't notice that when I go and hit like purchase. So it puts me to whatever store they think I'm gonna be at. And unfortunately, it's never the one close to my house. So. Um, we've got that uh, two inch pink insulation uh, for under the slab loaded up on the trailer. I got about six pieces that I want to return because those are like almost $30 a sheet. So that's a nice little uh, rebate if you will that I'll get some money back and basically these stairs will be for free. Uh, but you have to return it to the store that you picked it up from because when you purchase stuff online from Menards, if it's purchased in a bundle, you have to buy a full bundle. You can't just buy like one thing. Uh, same with the Fox Blocks. You can't just purchase like six straights or six corners. You've got to purchase an entire pallet. Then you have to go and argue with them that no, you guys forced me to buy that many. I want to return what I don't want. So when we picked up all of this insulation, I made the guy write down on a piece of paper saying, okay for return, will not be charged that 20% restocking fee. So, again, because of the mix up online, uh, not knowing my location, I've gotta go all the way to the downtown one. Luckily, I do have another refund from them when I returned a bunch of number five rebar. So I got about $118 there. And after weeks and weeks of bitching, I finally have some rebate. Uh, came yesterday in the mail, a whopping $215. So great, you guys still only about $2,000, but that $215 plus all these panels plus that $118 that I got for the rebar, like I said, this whole run here should be free. I am going to see if they have the Norboard uh, there. Uh, the subfloor. Hopefully they do. It's the exact same thing as Home Depot because I do want to not have to pay for that and I'll get a rebate for it also even though you're purchasing it with a rebate or with a refund you still get a rebate if they've got the 11% off going. So I'll have to pay 30 some dollars a sheet now uh, but later you know 
in the future if I ever get a rebate it will drop that down to like 27 or 28 dollars the same as Home Depot but uh, basically if it's, if it's the exact same thing I might as well pick it up while I'm here and, and pick it up for free and again the whole reason why this is an issue is when I have purchased stuff accidentally and I went to the other store my local one to pick it up they're basically like oh you can't pick this up here it was purchased at the other one and I'm like, no, it was purchased online. Why can't you just fill the order here and let me pick it up here? Well, apparently they don't do that. So I'm not going to take a chance to go to the local one, try and return this foam only when they're going to send me downtown anyway to return it because that's where it was purchased from, even though it's the same freaking company. So whatever, I'll spend a little bit more on gas, but we're going to head down there now. We're going to get our lumber. We're going to do this return. And uh, hopefully we're gonna get cracking on these stairs today. And again, fingers crossed, it all goes well. All right, everybody, welcome back. After about three and a half hours getting down to the downtown Menards and dealing with their return policy and trying to get them to pull everything up in the system and purchasing these boards, I'm finally back home. So what we've got going on now is a quick down and dirty way to cut stairs from what I've seen online. Basically, it's eliminating the need for a framing square. Now, I do have a framing square, but to figure out the angles and all that stuff, um, not something that I'm educated enough to do. So, the first thing that they're having us do is we know that the top of the stairs or the top of the subfloor down to the concrete is 10 foot 3 and a quarter inch. Now, you need to calculate the height of your finished floor down to the bottom of concrete because obviously you want your last step to be within code so it's not too high and it's not too low. Obviously, you can see I started marking out here, but basically this is what I did. Um, we've got 10 foot times 12, we got 120 inches plus three and a quarter inches. Now, we're pretty sure we're gonna go with a finished hardwood floor that's roughly gonna be another three quarters of an inch. So we've got exactly, I don't know what the heck just happened there. Okay, so we have 124 inches from the top of finished floor all the way down to the basement concrete. Now, I've already figured out that we're gonna have 16 rises. Now that is when you step onto the step, the rise is what you have to come up to. Now, Ohio code is not like other codes, but Ohio code says that that step up, the rise, cannot be more than eight and a quarter inches. And at 16 rises, you can see that we are under that at seven and three quarter. Now, seven and a half seems to be about ideal, which everyone uses. But unfortunately, to make this work for 124 inches, we have to go with what works. And as you can see, 124 inches for 15 rises, See, we're over eight and a quarter by 0 0.01 inches. So 15 rises is not gonna work. And the reason why we don't wanna use 17 is obviously you're under seven and a half. Uh, so no matter what, we can't get to seven and a half inches for a rise, but we don't wanna go with 17 because we don't want that many steps and we don't want the stringers to be so long going down into the basement. So it looks like 16 is going to be ideal at seven and three quarters of an inch. So the first thing that we did is we made up a jig. So on this piece of OSB, on the rise here, from the top of that corner to the bottom of the corner, we have seven and three quarter inches. Now, a typical run, which is what your foot steps on, is around 10 inches. Now, we still have to play with things that it's not gonna be 100% ideal. We are gonna go with 10 inches, but it's not gonna be 100% ideal for us because when we had our treads cut, we had those cut at exactly 12 inches. It's not like our tread is gonna be a typical two by 12 that's 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half. They're exactly 12 inches. Well, the problem with using a 10 inch uh, run and a 12 inch stair is you obviously have two inches of overhang. The problem with that is with two inches of overhang, you are beyond code. Code only wants an overhang no more than an inch and a quarter. So we are going to have to 
put on the tread first and then put on the riser foot stop, if you will, the thing that you'll kick with your foot. Usually you put that up first and then you put your tread on, but if you're cutting 10 inches and let's say you use a one inch riser, uh, you've just now made our treads 13 inches long. So now it's sticking three inches over that 10 inches. So that's not gonna work. So we have to put our tread on first and then we need to put on an inch or three quarters of an inch riser board there. So again, that's where your foot is kicking. So that'll take us from two inch overhang, then you put on the riser an inch, it'll bring down to 11 inches or you'll have an inch overhang or if we use three quarters, it'll bring us down to the code, which is an inch and a quarter overhang. So unfortunately, they're again, they're not gonna be made 100% like normal, but no matter what, you're gonna see um, a gap there. Whether you're looking down your tread, down on your board where they come together, where the gap's gonna be down that way, or if you're looking up your stairs and you see a gap going that way. No matter what, you're gonna see a gap that you may have to finish off with a trim piece. Hopefully you cut them 100% perfectly so you don't have a gap. Um, obviously boards over time can move and stuff, which may create stuff as they're drying and stuff like that, which you may see light going through, through the basement. But either way, I, I think it'll be fine. But again, all we did was make a jig here that we've got a seven and a half inch uh, rise and we got a 10 inch run. So first thing that we did, we obviously just put this down on this board and we drew a line bottom and then top. We moved it up and we kept on going until, this is the rise part now and this is your run, until we counted out 16 and then we were able to stop. Now for an 18 foot board, we're able to stop right here on number 16 that we don't have to go beyond that. So this is gonna be cut off and this end over here is gonna be cut off. Now, the important thing that they emphasize that I listen to is to make sure that your first step you cut it back whatever thickness of your tread is. Because if you got seven and three quarters of an inch here, and then you put on your tread, obviously you just increased over that uh, code at eight and a quarter, especially with us having two and a half inches of tread. So that would be not with code. So we drew another line two and a half inches up. So this first rise is gonna be actually very short until we put on our tread. Now here, once you go up two and a half inches, you can see you're short again until you put on your tread. So that first one there is very important to cut that uh, two and a half inches off or an inch and a half, an inch, whatever your tread's gonna be made out of. So that way your first step is within code. So as of right now, I think we're good to cut here and cut all the way up. The only thing I have to do is figure out this last cut here but we're gonna go ahead and knock one of these out and hopefully we're good. But as you can see, we do have enough material in here before that point that when we went back 10 inches, that that gives us enough lumber in here that we're still gonna be safe. If I would have put the rises and the runs or the treads and the kick stop where they were supposed to be, um, if I would have cut back a little bit more and then put an inch board here so that I had my inch and a quarter over here, well, now I've just lost an inch more lumber in this way, which would greatly reduce the strength in here that this could eventually snap. So this is basically code minus me going a quarter of an inch more this way and losing lumber. But again, it should be fine because it looks like lumber wise, the online calculators say we're fine, but on here you can see we've got five inches, which is more than enough that if this were to ever weaken, you can throw a two by four that's three and a half inches all the way down here and nail it from each side or just put one on one side and that would greatly increase the strength here. But either way, I think we're gonna be fine. So we're gonna go ahead and get cutting on this one. Fingers crossed it goes good and we should have our first one knocked out.
All right, so first cut, not so bad. Uh, that saw is not the easiest to work with. I'm obviously not an expert with it, but obviously this part here is gonna be what's sitting on the concrete. Now, it's a good thing that we have this Japanese saw again. I can't remember the name of it. I know it begins with a G, but I'll post a link down in the description because obviously you've got a circular saw here and you're coming up to a corner. So we're gonna run the saw up here and then up here and then stop. That way we don't overcut. And then we'll go ahead and finish out that uh, 90 degree cut there with the handsaw. I don't know, somebody wanna explain that to me? Why, no matter what I do, when I cut 100% on this line, I basically just start to make fire. Uh, you can see here in a second when I cut this off, or if you look at one of these boards over here, uh, where I start to cut, basically I just start to burn the wood. And I'm holding it down on top of that uh, board 110%. Um, again, I'm cutting right on that line. I do not understand why every time, uh, no matter what I do with this saw, I just end up burning the wood. It's either the blade is messed up or something, but even when it was brand new, it, it just always happens. All right, that is one done, and that is gonna make for a long day if I have to keep burning this wood because I cannot get that saw to cut through material cleanly without something going on that the blade just gets hung up and it's not cutting. But we have 63 more to go total, and then we can go ahead and try one of these out. Well, I'm gonna have to figure out something. The blade cuts straight, or it looks straight as it's spinning, but no matter what I do, it is just not straight at all. You, you get a hump and a dip. This side uh, here is closer in than that side there. So it's like as the blade is cutting through, the blade is getting bowed out as it's going down like this. So it's trying to cut like this at an angle. Um, I don't know, I can't figure it out. Uh, I really don't feel like sanding every single one of these, but I mean, you can see where it starts to burn. Usually it's at the end, so it's like when the blade is about this far in, the tail is dragging, and it's starting to burn the wood, and it won't cut through. So I gotta figure out what the heck to do, because this is gonna be a nightmare that I still, uh, I've only gotten three done, and I still got 61 to go. All right, last two I cut real quick, seem to be a little bit better. I've got this old Black and Decker uh, that Aaron's grandpa used to have. Uh, when he passed away and uh, his wife passed away, Aaron's grandma, we went over to the house and just everyone was kind of either grabbing stuff before they were selling it and uh, picked up this and a little jigsaw. This thing's got to be from like 1980 or something. But uh, last two cuts, as you can see uh, here, 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 and here, no real burn marks except right there. I must have moved the back of the blade a little bit, but you can see that is a heck of a lot different than what's been going on here. It's also a heck of a lot more powerful because it is electric instead of hooked up to a battery, which I'm just burning through these batteries within like two or three cuts. So again, I'm not sure how I can cut a line straight as an arrow and have that blade also look straight, of an arrow, straight as an arrow, but then it's getting wonky on me Maybe because the saw is a bigger saw. It's a, uh, I think a seven and a half inch blade instead of a six and a half inch blade. Even though I do have the guard lowered just enough to cut through the uh, lumber here. It's not like I'm allowing more saw blade to go through than what is needed, but uh, uh, I don't know. This thing is really ticking me off and this seems to be working a lot better, even though that uh, I'm, I think I have an extra blade because this one I think is a little old, seems to be chipping up a little bit more wood as opposed to, to the Milwaukee, which the blade obviously is brand new. But uh, I don't know, this should go a lot faster now though at least. That's one done. Uh, no idea how it's gonna work out. Uh, something else I just noticed. This board here is 11 and an eighth inch wide. That board there is 11 and 3 sixteenths. That border there is 11 and 4 eighths. And that board there is 11 and a quarter. So every single one of these is a different uh, depth, if you will. 
it may be okay because the stairs obviously are going up here. You're just gonna have a little bit more thickness in here, but I will have to run each one of these through a calculator because uh, this one, for example, being the smallest at 11 and what I say, an eighth, uh, I think we measured that before and we said five inches. That may not be code. You may need five and a quarter inches or something of wood in here. So this one in particular may have to get a two by four that runs all the way down it to bolt that in together to give more strength in here. Um, but we'll punch that into the calculator and see. But right now let's go set up in the basement. Uh, I did get some hangers so that we can attach that guy there up top. And we can put a few screws uh, up in this area here that will bolt into the LVL. But let's go set up and see if this thing even works. Fingers crossed we did it right. So far so good. Um, it went up pretty easy. As you can see, we're sitting almost completely flush on the bottom. We may have to do a little bit of a shim. Obviously this concrete floor isn't 100% level, both left to right and front to back, but it is pretty much sitting on the bottom there. Uh, up in here, we went with a Simpson adjustable hanger. Basically, it's got eight nails that go into your header. Also eight nails that go in on the bottom and then you've got four and four. Now, if you're already noticing or notice a four, this was kind of a thought in my head already that we weren't gonna be able to get flush in here. And that's because this bracket, obviously we can't nail through that bracket for this one to go through here. So we got a little bit of a space. So game plan here, we'll probably stick some lumber down in here to stiffen this up, nail it in this way, and screw probably all the way into the header here or this LVL running this way. Uh, it should be okay with this overhang though, because again, we've got two and a half inch treads. So hanging out over here, it's not like that tread is gonna buckle and wanna go down in there. Uh, but we use this piece of OSB as scrap for three quarters of an inch. So we got that all the way down to 10 and a quarter. So now when we put a two and a half inch uh, right on here uh, for the stairs that we had made, that'll get us back to the seven and three quarters of an inch going from here up to here. Now, unfortunately for the time being, as we're using these for construction steps, uh, if we use a uh, two by 10, obviously that's only an inch and a half. So we'll be an inch low. So just gotta take your time going uh, down the stairs so you don't trip and fall. But that's not gonna be up there anyway. So you're three quarters of an inch lower already. But we're gonna knock that one out next. So that way we can get these completely level. And then the two middle ones that we'll do, we'll go ahead and put those up. And we'll probably put a two by 10 on here to secure it. And then we'll bring up that, uh, uh, the, the two middle ones up to this line here. So that way they're all 100% completely even. But so far, so good. So let's knock out three more. Hey everybody, welcome back. So it's been a few days. Pardon me, I'm out of breath, a little hot and sweaty. Um, basically, we've got some good news and some bad news going on. Uh, the bad news first, I suck at cutting stringers. Um, I tried my best. The circular saw just isn't getting the job done, even though I'm using uh, Aaron's grandpa's that's more powerful and it's cutting them no problem. Um, individually, they look fine. But when I started putting three of them together and I didn't even get to the fourth, um, they're just not equal. Uh, you go to put a tread on and it's rocking. You go to put a riser on and it's not sitting flush. So 
mistake that I made, um, I'm probably gonna cut one and use that as a template and then transfer that to the next three and use the first one as a template for each one. Don't, don't cut number one to cut number two, then use number two to cut number three, then use number three to cut number four because then you can get off on each one. So that's mistake number one. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is, fingers crossed, I'm probably going to use a jigsaw. Uh, the only thing I'm afraid with using a jigsaw is when the blade gets through the wood on the other side, the blade can vibrate back and forth. So again, I'll probably run into the same problem. On one side of the lumber that you're cutting on, it'll be nice and straight, but as the blade goes through an inch and a half, the same reason that I was having an issue with the circular saw blade, it may end up bowing out back. Therefore, if you're trying to make um, the tread, instead of sitting completely flush, one end's gonna be like this and the other one's gonna be off and then that tread's not gonna sit flush. So it's a, it's a problem usually with a reciprocating saw, but usually it's the longer the blade you have a problem. Jigsaw blades are obviously only like that big, so I don't think there's gonna be that much vibration. So I'm gonna go to the store and pick one of those up. Unfortunately, Aaron's grandfather's jigsaw, the handle broke. Um, it's you know 20 30 years old and the plastic just got too weak from pushing forward on the handle and it cracked so it still works but you can't put a lot of pressure on it because the handle just ends up bending so i'm going to go pick up a new jigsaw and i'm probably going to pick up a craig jig uh one that i can kind of bolt down put the jigsaw all the way up to the metal frame run it down the side so that way it takes out the air of human and you're just running it down a flat plane. Hopefully that cuts the line a lot straighter. And uh, fingers crossed it goes well this time. So I've wasted at least two or three. I may still keep the first one as the jig, use the fourth one as the second one and go buy two more. Luckily, like I said, I didn't really have to pay for them. It pretty much, they paid for themselves in rebates and uh, refunds. So we'll see what's gonna happen. Uh, on to the good news, the zip R sheathing showed up for the garage. Now, if you don't remember from the other video, we went with zip 6.0, which technically speaking is a 6.6 .6 R value because you've got an R6 in the poly iso foam, and then you've got about an R.6 within the 716 OSB. So overall, this is exactly uh, one inch and seven sixteenths, which if you remember, this is why these walls are back set because I want an ease of siding and putting up stone veneer and stuff like that. So I wanted all of this 100% completely flat and flush. So we've got an inch and seven sixteenths cut back here on the foam and an inch and seventeenths cut back here on the sill. Now, Zip usually uses the Zip R tape or the Zip tape um, that you roll on. Now, I think there's better ways to do it in this day and age where people are actually liquid flashing it. Uh, you can buy Zip's product, but since I already have enough of that Aqua Mastic from Rubber Wall, I think that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. So wherever you have a seam going horizontally and vertically, Instead of using the zip tape, I'm probably just going to use a spatula and use the uh, rubber wall aquamastic. Uh, and then if you want to go even beyond that, you can also spatula and caulk all of your nail holes. So that way this garage does end up being 100% waterproof and airproof. Now down along the seams here, I'm basically just going to bring up the mastic and the rubber wall. So as that panel sits right here, you'll just bring that up and seal that together. Now, if you remember again, the front of the garage is only set back one inch. And the reason why I did that again is because while the foam is going to stop right here, I'm going to cut three inches of that foam off so that way the 7 16th sheathing goes over to here and then we'll have a stop line right here. So this will come out and go to there. So that was a decision I made just to get that sheathing over here because right now if you can see somehow, 
See, there's light right through there that you can see through these two boards. So I don't want to aquamastic and flash all this. I'm just going to go ahead and bring that OSB up over top of it, nail it down through here, and then that should uh, seal this off a little bit better. I may still aquamastic or wrap in here where the OSB sticks to fix that hole right there where that comes together. But that was the game plan. And, uh, since there may be some just stone down in here or something, it's okay that that OSB is gonna hang over here, um, the 7 16 and then I'll be able to just go ahead and nail all the way down through here, so that way um, that sheathing has something to attach to. Uh, over here, again, that's why we put these boards on, because we're not having that 7 16 hang over where you can nail into the sill plate. We now have a nailing surface to go ahead and hit with these two by fours that I ran all the way down there on the bottom. So I don't know when I'm gonna put up uh, the zip R sheathing. Um, usually you're supposed to put the trusses on first. Now I got a confirmation that all of the house trusses are not gonna be here for three more weeks, which is October 15th. So I hate sitting around and not doing anything. I would really like to get that installed. I may still do it. The problem with putting up the sheathing before you have the trusses on is you've now built a wall that's gonna act like a parachute and you've got nothing attaching one wall to another wall uh, giving you uh, bracing and stiffness. So if a huge windstorm comes through here, which usually comes from the west and blows that way, um, if I put all the sheathing up on that wall, that wall is just going to want to push in and fall apart. Obviously, we've got bracing on the outside and the straps still up on the roof holding these two walls together. But I don't know. I I'm, I'm impatient to sit around for three weeks and not do anything while I have all that material sitting there that I can knock that out. Now, since I did just go ahead and get all of the zip bar sheathing off the trailer, I am going to head to Home Depot right now and pick up the rest of the OSB. Uh, I do have four sheets left that I can knock out in here, but I'm going to go ahead and pick up the rest just so I can knock out a little bit more in here. We are still waiting on the third LVL to show up, so I can't really do any more than what is there, there, and one more sheet there. So there's not really too much left to do today. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and put the Tapcon bolts in too, and then this should wrap this video up. So, sorry it was a failure on the stairs. We're going to go ahead and see if we can knock it out with a jig or see if a uh, uh, deck installer can uh, get back to me and see how much he'll charge. Because um, not only do I want him to probably maybe cut some stringers, but we've got to go ahead and get this knocked out too so we can get up in here. And this is almost six feet off the ground. We need a nice four by four uh, landing with stairs. A deck person can knock that out probably within hours versus me taking all the time to do it. So uh, we'll wait in here back to see. And that may just go in another video as you kind of see me or them in the background knocking that out. But uh, we are on the way. Uh, the new, new Dura is on the way because I've got most of the subfloor in uh, that can sit out in the yard for a few days. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap this up here. Um, we'll get cracking on those stairs again and try for round two. But uh, please like and subscribe. You guys are doing awesome. Uh, the other day, I think we had over 50 subscribers in a day. That was crazy. And I think minute wise, it was like 16,000 minutes in a day. That is insane. I thought Aaron and I would never get monetized. I thought it would take years for it to happen. And I think right now we're at almost, I think we're over 160,000 minutes of view time and we're coming up on almost 500 subscribers and YouTube's uh, thing now for being monetized um, is a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours or 240,000 minutes, but it seems like it's happening really fast. So again, we wanna thank you guys all for making it happen. Um, please like, ask us questions. Uh, we do wanna do kind of maybe a little bit of a um, Q and A here in a little bit. So if you guys get a bunch of questions in and want them answered, we'll go ahead and read off your name and say, you know, you asked this question, this is why we're doing this, this is why we're going with this product. Um, 
and I think that'd be a little bit of a fun video. But uh, stay tuned. Uh, we will see you guys all next time when we probably finish out the stairs, the subfloor, and maybe get to hanging some sheathing. So we'll see you all later. One other thing I wanted to add real quick. Um, if you go to our YouTube page, you can see down in the bottom right hand corner where it says neck of the woods. There is a link to our Instagram account. Uh, it is neck of the woods 2020 on Instagram. I think that's a little bit easier of a way to get a hold of us and uh, contact us and message us if you want something private and you don't want to do a YouTube comment. Um, you can go over there and message us and that way we can see stuff a little bit easier and reply back to you. So again, that's neck of the woods 2020 on Instagram.